Hey everyone, Philosopher Stoner 666 here. I just want to continue sort of where I left off. Um, about nine months ago, uh, approximately nine months ago, I discovered, uh, you know, David Benatar's book, Better to Have Never Been. And, you know, I trolled the internet and looked at blogs. And I found this one anti-natalist blog and trolled it. And over the course of a few months, you know, kept reading it and became more and more convinced, you know, that that's the truth. And I sort of went through a, a bout of depression back in, uh, back in, I'd say, you know, October, November, December. And, you know, I, I just sort of lost the motivation to, to, you know, to do things. You know, not that I'm stupid or couldn't do them. I just was sort of like, you know, well, what's the fucking point? <laughs> you know, went through this sort of, uh, demotivational thing. Anyway, so I stumbled upon this blog and uh, I was chatting and the uh, little chat tango uh, thing with this person on, on this guy's blog, Dima Sokal's uh, blog. It's a good blog, by the way. Or it was, at least. Like, he doesn't update it too much because, you know, there's not really much to say. But anyways, I was having this conversation this guy popped into the room and he started talking about this guy, uh, Julius Bonson. And I looked him up and, you know, it's an interesting point the guy brought up, something that I had never thought about, you know, because I was pretty convinced by uh, Benatar's argument, sort of, and these other thinkers that I subsequently read, you know, like Emil Sioran and uh, Charles Bukowski and, um, you know, I even, you know, found Derived Energy's channel. Like, that was a couple of months ago I found that. And a few other uh, videos, you know, like, started watching Woody Allen movies and stuff. And I'm like, yep, you know, I sort of agree with this sort of perspective. Uh, to the, you know, I don't think it's necessarily absolute truth, but it's pretty close to the truth. So, um, anyway, this guy Julius Bonson uh, was a Schopenhauer follower, disciple, whatever. And, you know, even though he was like 18, whatever, um, year philosophy, so like 19th century philosophy, he brought up the, he expanded upon the concept of the will. So Schopenhauer talked about the will being this unsatisfiable will. So this guy took, takes it even farther saying, you know, that at the end of the day, you can't destroy it. It's like the, I made a video a long time ago, a few months ago about the life force. And it's sort of that point I was thinking about back then, but he articulates it way better, and, and I can't think of the exact quote. But uh, he talks about it being this will, and how inevitably it's like a lust that it just keeps coming back. It just keeps coming back. So the, the, the thrust of his argument, the main point the guy was trying to bring up in the chat was that in order to sort of end life, or to end gracefully let it go is impossible. That life is just going to keep coming back and consciousness is in sentience or whatever you want to call it. Our minds, our self-awareness, um, um, organisms with a self-awareness that, you know, think and feel, that sort of thing. Uh, they're just going to keep coming back if you don't get rid of reality itself or that what entails reality itself, which is, you know, physics and chemistry. Unless you can figure out a way to destroy physics and chemistry, it's just going to keep coming back. And, you know, that's the, that's the weird thing is that, you know, we've had hundreds of mass extinctions on this planet and life keeps coming back. You know, it's been going on for four billion years of this, uh, you know, life thing. Animals, you know, doing their thing, eating each other, doing whatever. Um, you know, it's like even this piece of ground here, you know, it's pretty barren, but, you know, like, look, there's weeds and they just pop out, you know, even there's like that piece of soil over there. And, you know, if you leave it long enough, eventually plants are going to start popping out of it. You know, like even it's pretty desolate in the middle of the desert where like it's completely hostile to life. Plants start growing. There's animals. Um, we could nuke this entire planet. <laughs> And eventually something, you know, cockroaches or something are going to find a way to adapt and uh, come onto it. So, you know, that this thing, this life thing and this consciousness thing might go on forever. And it's, you know, it's a pretty disturbing thing, you know, because there's no, at the end of the day, there is no solution. 
So at the end of the day, you're left with um, psychology or um, helping people get over it, you know, to find some way to self-actualize or, you know, find out, you know, just a, a something to do to make themselves feel better. So anyways, just sort of toying around with those ideas. It's a very interesting point. And, you know, I guess at the end of the day, you have to sort of think, I guess, you know, um, deal with the present, but still that, you know, this, the problem of life, we haven't really, there's a lot of questions that are still out there, like abiogenesis, like what, why would it need to happen? You know, why do we need to see things in color? Um, why do, you know, why does abiogenesis keep happening? Um, you know, probably things like the Drake equation, there's probably not life elsewhere in the universe. But then again, if it happened here, it could happen elsewhere. And it's sort of like, you know, well, what are you going to do, right? It just seems so big picture wise, so out of our little, you know, our little silly human ego trying to control it. And it just seems, you know, like we can't control it. We can't do anything. And, you know, I've been convinced not to have kids because inevitably the human race is going to go extinct and I'm just not, I can't be bothered with that and, you know, well, why bring somebody here if they're just going to die anyway, right? Like, that's the way I look at it. But the problem will still be here for the animals and for other creatures. But I guess, you know, I'll be long dead and, you know, I won't, I won't have to give a shit, but something else will have to give a shit. And, you know, it'll just be this problem that goes on forever. And, you know, and none of this is original. I mean, even Nietzsche um, talked a little bit about it as being the eternal recurrence, that you're going to come back and do the same life, the same thing over and over and over again, over again. You know? <laughs> so, yeah, it's pretty, sounds pretty fucked up at the end of the day. Anyway, just some, uh, some interesting ideas out there. Uh, Philosopher Stoner 666 out.